guys and welcome back to another video. So in today's video we are doing my June reading wrap up. So in June I read, I read eight books. I read eight books in the month of June. I read five romances, one thriller, one memoir and one sci-fi. So that math should add up. I don't know what my average rating is for the month. There is a five star rating. Well, no, there's a 4.5, but I've rated it like a five on like Goodreads. I gave it a good rating. Um, so the first book that I read this, well, I finished this month is In the Weeds by B.K. Borison. This is the second book in the Love Light series. This book follows Evelyn and Beckett. Evelyn is the social media person from the first book the influencer from the first book and then Beckett is the farmer that works with Stella on Love Light Farms which is a Christmas tree farm and uh, sells like other produce throughout the year. I rated, I rated it three stars. I think these are just okay books for me. Like they're nothing too special, they're enjoyable. I went into this with slightly higher expectations in the sense that for the first book I went into it thinking this is going to have more like Christmas vibes. First one didn't. So I had dropped a rating for that and I was thinking maybe this one will be better. It might just be the, the type of plot because all of a sudden we go like it starts off as like a one night stand like they've had a one night stand in the past and that's kind of how they know each other. Um, so I don't know whether I like that start because it's built all of a sudden it's like built on like this like physical connection. Like there are sweet moments throughout. I will say it just didn't grab me. I do own the next book in the series so I will be reading it because again I want to give this author another chance because I can tell why people love them they're just not hitting the same for me I don't know whether it's me or the author at this point so again I also I own the third book I'm gonna give it a go then the next book that I finished was Lingus by Mariana Zapata um I've read this on my kindle so I got Lingus for 99p um, and like I'd never read any Mariana Zapata books before. I do now have um, Kindle Unlimited so and I know that a lot of her books are on there. I rated this, although I didn't add like a little comment, I think this was like a three and a half for me. Started off really strong, loved it, it was like this is going to be at least like a four and a half. Then towards the end it kind of dropped me. Lingus follows this basically this woman who goes to a porn convention meets a guy turns out he's also a porn artist and it just follows their like what begins as a friendship and what like slowly develops into more i enjoyed this one in terms of like the actual romance and like it very much was a slow burn i think it just lost me towards the end i just i just stopped kind of caring but it was still such an easy and quick read and I did enjoy it. Then I read 10 Hours to Go by Keely Carrack. This is like a nice, like, I'm going to call it a half floppy book. It's not floppy floppy, but it's like, you got good flop here. Um, so I read this for four and a half stars. I read it in one sitting. This was literally a one sitting kind of job. Um, and I loved it. Was it the best writing? Probably not, but I loved it. Captivated me. I wanted to know what happened so much. I literally just wanted to know what happened. There is another book by her called Don't Let In The Cold. So I might try and see if I can pick up that book. Because, and also because like the text is like on the bigger side as well. Um, and it was just so good. So, so good. Like I read it. I was, I think it was because I was staying away longer because I had like a night shift as I'm in like the situation now. I do a lot of my filming on night, like night shift related stuff. What I've put in my comment, like in my review is this ending was not what I expected at all. It's not exactly like a twist, but it's like an avenue that you don't expect to happen. Then I finished When in Rome by Sarah Adams. I rated this a four stars might be more like a 3.75. It was good. I enjoyed it. But I think I just, I think I enjoyed 
I don't know whether I enjoyed When I'm Rome or Practice Makes Perfect more. No, I read Practice Makes Perfect first without like realising that it was part of like this like interconnected standalone series. Like I could, you could read them separately and you don't, re you only get like a very tiny glimpse of the main world character from the second book in the first book. Um, so you don't actually have anything ruined. Like obviously if you read the second book first you know this first couple get together but you kind of know that anyway. It was cute, it was nice. I enjoyed it. Probably won't think about it again though. But it was nice. Then I finished Rent to Be by Sonia Hartle. Um, rated just like four stars but I think on Goodreads but I think it was again more like that like 3.75 rated. This was a nice book, fairly short, nothing special. It was one where it was like on the shorter side so I could get it off of my like currently reading. But other than that, that was it. Then I finished The Woman in Me by Britney Spears. Did not rate this book at all. I listened to this in audiobook version. It's not read by Britney. There is like a little intro from her um, and I can kind of understand why she wasn't reading it because what she went through is a lot and it's very recent. It was very poignant and like because I was younger when this Britney's like what people had at the time which assumed to be like her these out of control stage um like when she shaved her head and everything like I was really young so I didn't I, I remember vaguely seeing something but I didn't know what. I'm not actually like a Britney fan in terms of like her music like I don't really listen to it obviously I know Baby One More Time or whatever it's or whatever the song is actually called but it was I wanted to know like the more context and I would definitely recommend a listen or a read um because it's a nice like eye opener into like what happened in like some parts of her dictatorship um and although I've seen like some comments have been like it's not like it doesn't go into like depth or anything I kind of feel like you kind of don't need to go into depth with like what happened she gives enough detail so like you know what happened without actually her having to go through the mental trauma of having to like properly explain what happened so it's kind of like although it's probably not as like well written compared to like i'm glad my mum died at the same time the way she told her story was in like a really nice way then i finished hopeless by lc silver so in reality i rated this at three and a half stars which is the lowest of the chestnut spring series i have rated I went into this not expecting like high expectations I didn't with any book um and this just disappointed it was missing the like family element that you get in the first book these two characters are very much isolated from their families her because of her actual family and him just because of what he's been through in the past and so because of that it just feels like very closed off and then at the time at times the age gap is very noticeable with like her like immaturity because it's kind of like I'm the same age as what Bailey is like in the book and the way Bailey is it's just a bit cringy I'm not I'm not gonna lie there's too big of a juxtaposition between the two characters there's you can get grumpy sunshine but it's just like there's grumpy and then there's imma it's like more of like a grumpy immature rather than a grumpy sunshine and although yes they both work on their drama and like the not drama their trauma i just i don't see it if they'd been friends for a couple more years if she was like 27 or something i could see it she's 22 with him being 35 i don't see it i'm sorry i'm sorry i know i'm sorry so actually i read two books from my tbr i forgot to mention my tbr actually um i picked out what seven books I think I've read two in total. Yeah, I've read like two. Um, and then the final book and the second book from my TBR that I actually finished was Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This is actually a book that I probably wouldn't have expected me to finish on my TBR. Um, in fact, it was probably the one that I least expected. Um, the main reason I did finish it is because of the first book was on Kindle Unlimited. So I did read it from there. And I did read it on like Night Shift as well. Did I read it on a night shift? No, I read it in my car after a shift. Big difference. This, I rated, I rated it at four stars. 
I stick by a four stars. This book probably, its rating always probably dropped down because there was like a level of tiredness to me when I was reading it, but I think that was more me. I do want to pick up the second book. Um, I don't own it, but again, I do want to pick it up. Um, and I also want to pick up, I love how the last time I looked at the book was on page 204 because that's the last page that I've dogged. I do want to pick up the second and third. I want to see like how the story unfolds more um, and how we go from like the ending and just develop off of there because obviously we see stuff happen throughout the book um, but this is following a group of anarchists and renegades um, and, and, and an anarchist manages, manages to infiltrate the renegades um, and kind of learn their like secrets from the inside and like how to invade um, and there's like glimpses of like romantic tension like this is very much why I but it is enjoyable and I kind of want to wait I can't wait to see like how secrets kind of get revealed because they're going to get revealed in like book two I think but those are the eight books that I finished in the month of June I can already tell you now July isn't gonna be as great I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what books you read in June and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.